Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the rather bizarre reports that the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, could lose her job in the reputed reshuffle in a few weeks for the only sane thing she's actually done in government. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So this really has to be the end of days, doesn't it? Priti Patel could not possibly have been made Home Secretary under any other government than a rabid Brexiteer one. She is almost always in hiding because even senior members of the Conservative Party understand that every time she opens her mouth, the party and the government lose standing in the public. Everything she says is venomous. She was banned from opening her mouth at all during the general election campaign for fear of losing the party tightly contested seats because it has to be borne in mind they won a large majority they got a, an 80 strong majority but it was by successfully targeting lots of seats and winning by a very very small number of votes a few more people turning out in them would have swung it the other way uh so it was it was far too risky to let her actually open her mouth you know you may also notice that she's hardly said anything during the coronavirus pandemic crisis as well and for the same reason. I mean, look what happened on the couple of times when they did trot her out to do a turn or two on the COVID daily briefings. Couldn't even read a simple number out. And that was just the amusing side of it. She made a proper ass of it. She labelled NHS staff as unskilled, including nurses and paramedics. She has said that the, the lives lost during the pandemic aren't something to keep stressing about and why won't people just move on she's been accused of bullying in multiple ministerial roles not just her latest one but most notably resulting in the loss of the most senior civil servant in her current department of the home office and this is something that's going to see her having to give evidence in public in an employment tribunal at some point as well now on the issue of the government's failure to provide ppe to healthcare staff a national scandal she replied that well, she was sorry that we felt that way she was sorry that we felt that this was a problem and this weekend she made a rare public statement to condemn the people of bristol for tearing down a symbol of racist imperialism that they had been calling on their elected representatives to remove for years decades even well home secretary we're sorry you feel that destroying monuments to human suffering is worthy of condemnation. But quite a lot of us are rather in support of it. But none of that controversy ever runs the risk of her losing her job. None at all. But apparently it's something that she's done, or rather hasn't, might. Because when the Dominic Cummings story broke a couple of weeks ago, it was battle stations. All cabinet ministers were ordered to defend Dominic Cummings, say that he'd done nothing wrong and that his actions were perfectly lawful. And the vast majority of them dutifully did defend his behaviour and the legality of his behaviour. Even Rishi Sunak, the new Chancellor, whom I thought was foolish for doing so, because although he was ordered to do it, he's basically unsackable now. He really is the most powerful minister in many ways. Uh, in fact, he's really more secure than the Prime Minister at this moment. They wouldn't dare get rid of him. But he did. But not all Cabinet Ministers did. Pretty Patel was one of those who didn't exactly fall over herself to defend Cummings. In a rare show of political astuteness, you would think, she did retweet Dominic Raab's. Because I remember on that weekend when I was seeing it coming out, particularly when I saw it from Rishi Sunak, I thought, I'm going to just check other Cabinet Ministers here. And, and I was surprised at the time that Priti Patel, all she'd done is retweet something that, that Dominic Raab had tweeted, uh, like a statement from Number 10, really. Um, and that was it. Now, it was implied support of Cummings because she was retweeting uh, like a, an explanation. So she implied her support, but she didn't actually give it. She never actually said whether on social media or, you know, any other form of statement. And, and as I say, I thought that was really curious at the time because defending the indefensible is her stock and store. You know, it's not something she normally worries about. And it's certainly not going to damage her political capital. You know, this is not a politician who ever worries about what people think of her. And I was thinking to myself, 
you know, perhaps, give, especially given that they were ordered to do this. So she has basically defied an order from Dominic Cummings. And I just wondered, you know, perhaps she has some personal antipathy towards Cummings. You know, like Johnson, Patel also worked on the Vote Leave campaign that was headed up by Dominic Cummings. Perhaps personalities clashed or something. Because as a, vo as a member of the Vote Leave crew, I had always wondered, because you've got a number of them now in the very top positions in government, and I'd wondered if they were all too important to be demoted or even sacked. Perhaps that's what she thinks. Maybe that's why she didn't feel she had to obey that order because she thinks, of you, you can't get rid of me. I know things. I know things. Uh, or perhaps she just doesn't care. Either way, reports have started to emerge last week that, you know, there is to be a reshuffle apparently in a few weeks, which means cabinet posts are up for a spate of hiring and firing. And, and there's suggestions from senior Tories that Pretty Patel's position is threatened because she didn't do as she was ordered and personally exonerate Dominic Cummings. Now, as I say, Patel was not the only minister to refuse to comply. She was in a very small group. Robert Buckland, the Justice Secretary, also refused. Very good reason in his case. I was talking recently about the foolish position the Attorney General, Swayla Braverman, has put herself in by defending him. Uh, really wouldn't do for the Justice Secretary to say a person who clearly did break the law, didn't break the law. Uh, Liz Truss also refused to back Cummings, which was an interesting one. Now, these two could well be sacked, you know, um, because apparently the report, and this is all, you know, from unattributable sources, of course, senior Tory MPs talking to the media. And, and usually these things are reliable, but we can't be absolutely certain because they've obviously they've not said it publicly. But the suggestion is that it's not just that they may lose their jobs because they didn't back him. Uh, cabinet ministers were told at the time that they had to back Cummings, otherwise their positions would be under threat. Which is not quite the same as saying you will definitely be sacked, um, which in itself you could argue is a, an act of weakness, because if Boris Johnson was absolutely prepared to get rid of anyone who didn't, he would have said, uh, you're going to do this or you're out of my cabinet. Uh, the fact that he didn't, if he didn't, and again, this is all reports, if he didn't, then that would suggest he wants just in case someone powerful didn't. Because as I say, Rishi Sunak absolutely could have got away with this. But there it is. And uh, but, but Buckland and Truss, he could sack those. They're not, they don't have enough standing in the party to cause him trouble on the back benches. Um, you know, he could let them go without any obvious weakening of his position. But what will be interesting is if Buckland goes, say, and Patel does not, because some of us have wondered if the vote leave campaign, which did break the law, that's that's not an accusation, that's a fact. Uh, the only thing that is speculating at the moment is who committed criminal acts for that whole group to have broken the law because the police investigation into that has been blocked. Obviously, the government have decided they, it's not really in their interest to let the police or the National Crime Agency investigate possible breaking of the law on the part of government ministers particularly the Prime Minister. And there is a suggestion that maybe, just maybe, they all have the goods on each other and that's why they're all as thick as thieves and maybe Pretty Patel's position is secure on the basis that, you know, maybe she'd go public. Or maybe not, maybe she doesn't have anything or maybe what she has implicates her just as much as anyone else and for that reason she'd keep quiet. Who knows? Who knows? But... If Pretty Patel stays in post after this threat, I would say that does weaken Johnson's position if the threat indeed was real. But if it looks like people are demoted, say Robert Buckland, for example, are demoted for failing to support Cummings, but Patel stays when she failed to support him, that might be more evidence, not proof, but more evidence that maybe, maybe, Pretty Patel really can't be sacked, no matter what she does. But there it is. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.